the clear first thing to do was to confirm that he needed some type of flexion movement. Um, and yeah, using that sustained extension in prone, just according to MDT, that gives us a really good indication of if they have a lumbar direction, uh, derangement with a flexion directional preference, if they get off the table and then they're blocked and can't bend forward or have a significant increase in their, uh, their inability to bend forward that way. And, um, you know, that's, that's exactly what happened, which just is more confirmation that we knew that there was some kind of flexion that needed to be done to reduce this derangement. Um, but that's where I think the, the paper gets interesting. And this case got interesting because we think about how straightforward lumbar derangements can be, especially if you've got this information, uh -huh. you say, okay, we know this about their inability to bend forward now. And we think that he's going to respond to some flexion. And, uh, you know, when we started to have the patient bend forward after that, um, you know, his symptoms were, were worsening. And that's where if you, if you think you're following the system and you say, okay, so you get that like red light response. Um, once again, I think somebody who might not have as much experience or might be quick to abandon the system would move uh -huh. on to something else. Um, uh -huh. But in this case, we knew how significant our previous findings were and didn't want to abandon flexion yet and decided to do a force alternative, which I think is a, an important thing for any clinician to keep in mind is if you can be in the right direction and we learn this on the courses, you know, don't think about immediately changing direction. Think about changing something else about it, like the, the starting position, in which case we unloaded him and had him lay supine. And even then he was performing flexion in, in supine and uh, had end range pain producing and increasing. And before we decided, all right, we, maybe we should test extension. We just sustained the patient in a mid range uh, lumbar flexion in supine. And after that, repeated flexion and supine reduce the patient's symptoms. And that was a, that was a significant part of this showing that, you know, it's not only repeated movements, it's sustained positions. And sometimes you got to try a combination of both in order to find what the patient needs day one.